Evening everyone. Um, just checking the technical aspects of things. Can you hear me? Please let me know. Because I'm not sure if you can hear me. <laughs> Here we go again. Yep, Mom. Okay, thanks, Matt. <laughs> okay. Hi, Andy. Thanks, Matt. Hi, Liv. Is that how you pronounce it, Liv? Okay, here we go. Another wonderful evening. I hope your week's been okay. I've had a very, very, very creative one, and um, the weather hasn't been too bad here in England. So um, let me know your questions, and we can uh, get started. I've been uh, working on audio excerpts of my book, and that's going really, really well. It will soon, well, it actually is up on patreon.com forward slash Ginger Gilmore. And um, I'm up to chapter 17. So <laughs> I'm really loving it. I tell extra stories, um, extra photographs, so you get more of a feeling that you're there. Then we have my art classes which is um, on my website. You can go to my shop.gingergilmore.co.uk. Um, I've put up five basic principle lessons of what Cecil Collins taught me. And then we can go into the Zoom experience where I take you deeper into opening your creative um, purpose. So, in doing this, all kinds of stories have come back into uh, my memories. And uh, maybe I should share one with you. There's a little mosquito that just went in front of me. <laughs> I thought they were finished for this season. Anyway. There was um, the moment that our children were born. That uh, was an incredible moment. David was uh, my partner. And each birth was different, except for that moment when they were born. It was like the whole of the universe stopped and heard and listened to them coming into the earth, into life. It was really special. So we had Alice. She was our first in English health systems, didn't allow first pregnancies to be born at home, which I would have liked. Scary, as um, most of Americans, unless you were really, really from the 60s, would, um, wouldn't want to have be so daring. So we had it in uh, the West London Hospital. And, uh, David was downstairs watching telly. It's 10 o'clock. Willie Wilson from his first band was there. And suddenly I just started having these feelings. I thought, well, these aren't painful, but they're coming quite often. They're like energetic experiences. So I thought I better time these. 
and lo and behold, they're coming at a certain distance together, frequency. So I leant out at the bedroom and said to David downstairs, um, I think we better go. <laughs> so he grabbed the bag and his little bag with everything that was what he might need to help me. And off we went. It was <laughs> out of one of those movies, you know, you're going really fast. And it's, oh God, when are we going to get there? Oh my goodness, David. <laughs> it's okay, Ginger, just calm down. We'll be there. And when we got there, it's like, it was like being on a Fellini movie. All the lights, it was in the morning, or in the night, pardon me. It was all green lights. And all these women with their husbands holding their tummies, walking in slow motion. <laughs> so, yep. So then the nurses took me downstairs and separated David and I. It was like, no, no, he, he's my partner. He's got to be with me. And he's, I was in the hands of two wonderful Filipino ladies who obviously, that's not how they did it in the Philippines. You go with the women and you have your babies and stuff. It's, and I kept on saying, please, please. I will need my husband. He needs to be with me. So finally they took me upstairs. My water's head broken and it was all go. I had a, we had a special doctor and he was supposed to come because we wanted the baby to be born in water. And uh, that didn't happen. But I have to say that moment when she did come, the universe was right there with her and the angels and the welcoming committee for us in the invisible realms. And it happened like that for all of them, except by the time I had Matthew, the fourth, I was um, well on the way with um, this Dr. Le Boyer, who um, worked with chanting so you do, um, and if you did, your midwife would just put out the proper tone that calms you down. Because if you're really tense, and you'll tense in your birthing canal. I didn't know this was going to be a talk about giving birth of babies, but that's where we all began. Hmm. Any questions yet? Oh, I'll have a look. Aha. Hi, Burpee. Hi, Stephen. So had you're here. Yep. Ida. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't realize I have to scroll down. But wow. Pablo. Where are you from? I see your flag, but I don't know all the flags. Hi, Frank. Lev is okay. All right, Lev. What have you been creating lately? Furpy, that's a really, really good question. I had this vision of this um, sort of tunnel with the light, I've done it similar before, there's the light with the clouds and there's this wonderful light hedging right around the edge of the circle that's coming, filling the tunnel so you know the way. And it's really grown into this gold leaf explosion and I'm so excited, I found this um, special gold leaf that's, you know, like when sometimes you see the colors in, in an oil slick. Well, it's just like that. 
And so I've covered the whole canvas with that. And then it will be built up. And what I've decided to do is that I'm filming each step and having a little chat with you so that you can see the creative process or mine of how at least this artwork has developed. And um, that's very, very special. But most of all, it's these um, audios and the art classes online that I've um, been creating. And that's, um, it's like the air is all around. I just feel this incredible creative feeling. It's, it's even when I'm cooking or walking around, it's, it's like I wake up in the morning and I think, okay, I feel it. How am I going to use it today? And because I'm one of the vulnerable people, I'm um, isolating. And so I walk around in my creations and thinking, how do you want to use me today? And it's really, really, I'm very grateful. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question. Hi, Phil. Hello, Michael and Doreen. Thank you for coming. Deborah. Hi. Thank you, Andy, for letting other people know. Thank you, Christian, for your best wishes. So we have someone. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not a linguist yet. It's Italian. Okay, thank you. Is it Luigi then? Thank you for my beautiful painting, Isabella. Thank you. Antonio, what are you saying? I'm using um, translation and it's slow. Sevilla. I haven't been there yet. I really want to go. When we get out of lockdown, there are a lot of places in Italy I want to check out Siena as well and things. Well, Dave, I wish my book could be translated in Italian and in Spanish, but if you find me a co-sponsor, we can work on that. Because there are a lot of people, I think, that would really like it. If you understand English, then maybe my audio book would be a, a way for you to um, sort of read my book. And you can get that by going on Patreon, dot com forward slash ginger gilmore and anyone that signs up gets a raffle ticket for getting one of my paintings for free so we'll see how that goes but i i really really like them so the thing is i'm like i feel like an athlete because i've got 90 chapters to do to finish the book and I'm up to 15 and I've been doing three or four a day which has visuals as well as audio and finding photographs to be um, with it and my wonderful friend Doreen and Michael helped me have an introduction which I really love and you'll get to see that too so, Ida. Hello, everyone. It's Ama and Ida from Spark Suite. We're just here to support Ginger in the chat. Hope everyone is having a lovely evening. They are my team, and I'm very grateful, along with um, my son, Matthew Gilmore, who helped me with this part of setting up my live stream. And my team just does all the rest. I'm very grateful to you guys. Thank you. Hi, Dominique from Athens. So it's Dominiki, I think. Verbi says, how do you remember every detail so well? You have a very good memory. 
Well, I asked myself that too, because um, I have been meditating and working on my inner process for many, many years and wanting to be a messenger that listens and is of service and to use whatever my God's gift has been. And when that was going on, I, uh, around the time my mother was passing over, I got a message very clearly that said, you must write your journey of love. I thought, wow, this is strong. What do I do with that? It took me about two years before I said, okay, I'll try. And when I started, it was like this other video had been going on inside my mind all these years. It's like I had a parallel experience for years. And um, I could remember everything. So I hope that answers your question. But I also find that if you're in a creative, um, a true creative experience with the invisible aspect of life and you're bringing those that aspect the Chinese call it a cloud of noble things if you bring that down into the form world then your memory is different in fact some days I don't have a memory what I have is a listening and my hands start to uh, do the work. You know, I might pick up a brush or I might pick up some paint, clay, even make an apple pie. If that's, or look at the flowers, go for a walk. It's like listening to the um, special aspect of being alive. And to beautify because I really think that's what we're here for to love all of creation and that includes you and you to you and me to myself Isabella can you tell the story of how you and David fell in love well that's a long one but not so long, <laughs> not, we were, I was in Ann Arbor, but um, it's the first chapter of my book and it's also in the audio book with pictures and stuff that was in the, in the book. But it, all I can say, it was um, very special I um, had just gotten a lead role in a film, which had been one of my dreams. I've been quite a dreamer all my life, and that my two main dreams was to be an actress, to be discovered in the soda fountain by a, a director. And then there was Prince Charming on a white charger not quite like Sleeping Beauty or Snow White, but um, I really felt it was going to happen. And so I had gotten this lead role and on this, we hadn't started filming yet. It's a bit like West Side Story. I was the girl, uptown girl, and he was the guy on the motorbike. You know the story. Anyway, on October the 28th, a friend of mine who had just gotten back from England said, come on, Pink Floyd is playing for the weekend. It was a weekend in Ar Ann Arbor, Michigan. Happened every year. And um, I thought, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And they all said, yes, come on, come on, go. So I gave in and we trundled off to the concert. 
And then these two friends of mine went off backstage. They were like big fish in a little pond. And I was shy and I just stayed in my seat. And I watched the roadies going backwards and forwards and the English at that time, at least in the Pink Floyd, all wore these Sterling Cooper black jeans, beautiful colored leather boots of different colors and velvet jackets and t-shirts and things. And they were shouting to each other, setting up. And then the band, the lights dimmed and the band came on and their music was amazing. The sound in the round, I'd never heard that before. And it's just traveled around and everyone was quiet and held in this beautiful moment. And afterwards, my friends um, said, let's go backstage. And I went with them because they were my ride. And uh, they left me standing in a corner, fortunately. Um, I, I, there was a customer of mine there I could chat to and the next thing you know Dave came up and looked me in the eyes and said hi I'm David that's sort of where it goes and the, but the story goes on for the next three days and I left my lead role and went to New York to be with him on November 5th so let's see Kenneth Ginger I was wondering how Obscured by Clouds album was how the movie was. Also, can I find the movie La Valley or the Valley in French, I think? Yes, it's on YouTube. And um, that was a special weekend in France, which is, I think, the fourth chapter in my audio book, in my regular book. And it was interesting that we were in the chateau and the Floyd put an album together in such a short time. And a girlfriend, Puddy, that was there, and I went off to the flea markets and played um, shopping. <laughs> Greetings from Poland. Is that Beta? Hi from Orlando. Hi Rick. I know Orlando well. My parents used, my, well actually my um, brother lives there right now. Phil. Hi Ginger. Can you tell us about the time when Sid Barrett turned up and walked into the studio at Abbey Road when you and the Floyd were there during the Wish You Were Here sessions? Well, that is a day I won't forget because Dave and I got married that morning. And we went off after our brief lunch at um, the pub. And when we got there, Roger said, um, it, it was Abbey Road Studios. I don't know if you've been there, Phil, but it's, you walk in, at, um, Studio One's on the left, and you come in and there's a lot of mixing things and coffee machine stuff too. And you walk into the main studio, which is the, the big console, and there's a couch in front, and then there's a glass partition that is, um, you can watch all the musicians go. I'm fumbling here. Anyway, um, Roger came in and said, uh, David, uh, can you come here, please? Can you tell me who this person is? And Dave looked at this person that was shaved head and non-expression eyes and pear-shaped body. And he said, it's Sid. And he didn't have, um, he couldn't, he didn't say much. He didn't share much. And they were trying to draw him out playing the music and things, but he was expressionless. I don't know how he got there. I don't know what was going on in his mind and all that, but it is certainly, it moved their hearts. It, it hurt. Yeah. 
And in some ways that hurt. And the love was put into the music. Hi, Tim Lovelace. I'm very well. Are you okay? Stephen, Stephen, I love the things that you post all the time. Good evening, Ginger. Do you have any contemporary artists or old masters that inspire or that you particularly admire? Love from Penn to Sea Bay. Yes, I have many of them. Um, Cecil Collins, who I um, trained with for eight years. Um, then we go back to Nicholas Rorick. Um, Georgie O'Keefe, the Pre-Raphaelites, um, Dana Lynn Anderson, who's a wonderful artist working out of Assisi. She's a very dear friend. Gosh, I could just... Giacometti. Um, oh, it just goes on. <laughs> But most of all, I love being creative and inspiring you to be creative because that's how we build who we are. Every person is so special and it, it, I just hope you all find the beauty that you really are. That adds to the world. That's the best thing you could ever do is be the beauty of who you are. Sandy, hi Ginger. How did you like Michigan, East Lansing and Ann Arbor? What did you study at MSU? I also lived in East Lansing and attended MSU not long after me. Aha. Well, I um, was a bit shy leaving my home because I had to skip a year. My mother didn't really want me to go, though I had a scholarship because I was so petite and shy and younger than everybody else. So it was a new adventure. And I don't regret it. I discovered rock and roll then. And my first acid trip was there. And then I moved to Ann Arbor, and that was easier for me because it was a smaller village. But, hi, Donald. I see you're here. Erica, what are your thoughts on astrology? Well, I had a phase of that. Um, it's uh, Dr. Sharma, this elder um, in, from India, India, that... Um, helped me through a crisis, a physical crisis with homeopathy. He used to have me coming to his surgery in the morning to just to read a book on astrology. Um, I forget the name of it, but the purpose of it is that we know what our sign are. What we don't know is all the other qualities that exist. And the purpose that he had me go through this was to discover the wholeness of what life is. And then um, I got very close to Dr. Werner Engel and Gerhard Adler, Jungians. So that took on a different quality of relating to astrology. Alice Bailey works with astrology in another way, which I studied for quite a while. And then there's the healing aspect. But I, as an artist, I'm a visionary. I don't work as a medium with astrology. I had a, a while with my Sufi teacher, Irina Tweedy, paying attention to my dreams. But that has uh, changed as well. The main thing that I do now is observe the way I think, the way I move, the way I feel and have it be a higher intent. So I'll ask myself if something is really a struggle, what's the purpose of this? 
what do I have to do inside myself to transform it? What am I learning from it? Because I believe and constantly feel now the higher energy that we are and all the possibilities we are. And that's what I want to live for. And I know that we can. So something that I'd like everyone to experience because it's in you. So Verpi, what have you got to say? So to beautify and love. That's a very good meaning of life. My philosophy is the meaning of life is to give life meaning. So in a way, it's the same thing. Well, it's like we're given special gifts within us. It's like a, life is a circle. And I feel that we to fulfill the circle, life gives. And then we return the gift. So it's like what you're saying. It's a yin and a yang, really. Hi, Kenneth. Jaina, why did you never get married after the divorce? Well, um, It's not easy to get over my um, love in a way for marriage till death do us part, the dream. Um, I did have a longer relationship with a spiritual teacher. I also was going through an inner development and discovery, a transition, they might call it. And now I'm married to my art. I'm married to the higher creative force. It's so fulfilling. Um, I wouldn't mind another relationship if that's meant, but it hasn't happened yet. So <laughs> I'm very happy with the way things are right now. It took a while especially if you have four children together, and we were very close. But a dear, dear, dear friend said, accept life as it is, and then make it special. I sought to have an answer for a while, but that didn't come. So I had to accept it, and then make life special. And we can all do that. Maybe that was the purpose of it. That I learned to make life special. And that it's beyond anything that we think is life. And sometimes it doesn't have a description at all. Hello, Massimiliano from Rome. Thank you for coming. Phil, also Ginger, can you tell us about the story when you were in the pan of pigs during the animals tours? I recall you saying to me that Billy Graham was behind having live pigs there to promote the animal tour. Or was it Steve O'Rourke? No, Steve's not behind that. Um, my sister Donna had just flown in with her husband to come um, to the concert. And they were in the limousine with um, Snowy White, the assistant um, lead guitarist, and um, I can't remember who else was there. Anyway, we were driving up the back of this, this stadium. I was in white lace. And we come up into this large stadium behind, and there are big curtains in this stages over there and the, the limo was coming in and there's this you know what they're like there there's big corridors going around and this I'm getting out of the car and I suddenly see this big pen full of hogs 
and they had white labels around them with each of the band's name. And then there were blank ones for the opposite team. Billy Graham had organized this. He thought it was great. It was the animal store. You know, ha ha ha. Let's have, um, what do you call it? Anyway, it was a big rope, a tug of war, big rope lying across ramps coming up. And he thought whoever lost would fall onto the hogs. And the hogs were really, really tight in the, in that um, cage area. Well, I was a big, a big animal lover, and there was no way that that was going to happen. So I said to Snowy, do you have a small knife? So he pulls out his pocket knife, I take it, and here I am, all white, lace flying, white boots, jump in the middle of, of the hogs, and start cutting off the labels going around one at a time. And the next thing you know, Billy Graham's big guys. I mean, you know, some of these football players and well, big muscle men that are security guards, they're big. And I'm, you know, going mad, hair flying. And they just pick me up whoop, and take me over and drop me down, kicking, kicking. And I'm going, Snowy, go get Steve O'Rourke. Get Steve O'Rourke. This isn't going to happen. Um, it didn't happen. Thank God. Well, I found out later that hogs can be quite um, aggressive, but they didn't hurt me. I think they knew that all was going to be well. Yeah. The farmer wasn't too happy because he had to take the hogs away. Billy would have had to have paid them for that. But um, I did get a reputation. <laughs> So let's see what else. Eric from Gal Galatian, Tennessee. Welcome. What is one? Kenneth. Ginger, what are your thoughts on Obscured by Cloud's album in the movie it made for? Also, can I find somewhere to watch or buy online? I think I answered that a bit earlier. Um, but you can buy it online, I think Amazon, or YouTube. You can go on YouTube and buy it. And it's a gentle um, movie. I um, hadn't seen it. I was really new to this whole thing. So there were so many impressions happening at the time. And now, just today, I was, or was it yesterday, I was listening to The Mud Men. It's like I had totally forgotten what the music was. And it's like going back in time for me to listen to it. I think everybody finds the music that inspires them. That, to me, is in a moment of my life. It's, it's probably a bit different of an experience than just to be the observer and first-time listener to those things. I hope... It inspires you. Burpee. I've never done acid. Oh, my dear. I've heard people have very different experiences. What was yours like? Well, I, I didn't do it very often. I wouldn't recommend it now from all that I know about the psyche. And also, it's not pure anymore. And it's being mixed with other th other chemicals, and it's not a healthy thing to be doing. And besides which, it, you do run the risk of ruining your uh, mind. I don't think it's worth it, because I know there are non-toxic things you can do, and it, to open your mind and to experience and safely can be really dangerous. I had w one experience where. I might not have come back. I'm glad I got back. But I seek to um, find life in its colors in a different way, and I know you can. 
blessing to you, Phil. Thank you for hanging out. Well, Kenneth, um, send me your uh, email or message me and I can send you the link, okay? Maurizio, what was the most beautiful venue of Pink Floyd concert you attended? I love Carnegie Hall. But I must say that it's more to do with concerts. That the they made their own environment. And one of my teachers said, um, create the environment where it can happen. And I think they did that. They took us on journeys to find ourselves. Probably didn't know that's what we were finding. But we certainly were unified in the beauty of the music. I hope my artwork creates environments that does that too. Actually, someone called one of my sculptures a spiritual ion machine. <laughs> she said it transforms the energy to peace in the room. So that's a, a wonderful compliment, I find. Verpy, what's your favorite song from Matt Gilmore? Oh my God. <laughs> well, I love Red, White and Blue. I know that he's calling it some stars or he's calling it Tre um, Color, but um, Red, White and Blue. And of course, if I, if I had a voice, I'd say, I love you. It's so long. I think that could really be a single. Um, thank you for being there, supporting him. He's very grateful. Alan Morton. Hello there, Ginger. Thanks for the technology we have. We get to listen and understand about life. I like the phrase, seeing the beauty in everything. Now I'm having to go to work. Well, Alan, have a beautiful time in your work, in your life. And maybe we'll see you next Wednesday. Buona sera, Flavio. Serious Lovecraft, hi. Thank you for being here. Isabella, what can I tell you about Rick Wright? Well, um, do you want the abbreviated version? Because that was a long, from 1971 onwards. I must say that is, he was in a way a very quiet listener. He um, had a very quiet special quality of what he shared within the group because each of them had a quality and um, it was difficult as he got more quiet when the band got more tense with each other yeah but then he met Franca who loved him and he awoke again. There's more in my book about Rick and how special he was. You can find that in shop.gingergilmore.co.uk Phil, Ginger, how do you find Nick's new band doing all the early Floyd material my favorite one he does in his new band is Fearless Gary Kemp nails that song perfectly. I think it's wonderful. It's like people playing Beethoven or Tchaikovsky now. Those songs are really special. And um, I'm glad that he's doing it because 
he's part of the essence of those songs. David calls you when you have a birthday or wish you Merry Christmas. Not for a long time he doesn't do that. He has a, a new family, a new experience of life. And um, the kids go and see him. And I get all the merriment when they're with me. So thank you, Ida, for putting that up. So, goodness, we've been here for 50 minutes, and I had said maybe I'd do 30. So maybe we have to... Um... Hi, Sharon, from New Zealand. Thank you for coming. Um, we are going to have replay of this, I believe, that you can um, miss part of it. So I think it's uh, time to say so long, as my son would say. It's time to fly. Thank you so much for being here and check in with um, my Facebook pages for all the up and coming other news and sharing of creative adventures. Thank you so much and see you next Wednesday. Good night. Thank you, Stacy. I'm just closing now.